So we were discussing this reading by K.S. James and uh, Srinivas Goli, Demographic Changes in India. Is, is the country prepared for the challenge? Now, in this part, we're going to talk about the improvement in life expectancy and the changing age structure. So let us just write about that. Improvement. In life expectancy. Improvement in life expectancy. So if you look at um, the Indian scenario, you'll find this that life expectancy has greatly improved. One thing. And uh, if you look at uh, uh, the current life expectancy and the life expectancy in the pre-independence era, you'll find this that the life expectancy now is has more than doubled uh, as compared to the pre-independence era. So I'm just writing one point. You will be writing it more from the reading. It has greatly improved. So you need to explain this, that why we are saying that it has greatly improved because if you compare it with the pre-independence era, this has uh, doubled. I mean, life expectancy has doubled. And what are the factors which have led to the improvement in the life expectancy? So one of the factors is, of course, the decline in the early childhood mortality rates. So when children, they pass this certain age, they develop an immunity. So they tend to live uh, longer. So one is, so what are the factors? which led to the improvement in life expectancy. One, decline in early Childhood, uh, childhood mortality rates, right? Then you have, uh, the another reason is that uh, in the pre-independence era, we had a lot of epidemics and famines. Uh, this also led to the, the slowing down of the life expectancy or fall in the life expectancy. And these famines were occurring because we didn't have enough food supply. We have to depend upon uh, the imported food also sometimes. So, but after independence, we India became self-sufficient in food grains. So that famine-like condition is not actually seen after uh, the independence. So the another reason is control of epidemics. means and as far as India is concerned, India is now self-sufficient. in food supply, self-sufficient in food supply, one thing. Then because of the better medical facilities also, death, death rates have declined and due to that life expectancy has improved. So that also is one of the factors which has led to the improvement in life expectancy, introduction of of better medical technology, of better medical technology. Then there are changes in the socioeconomic status of the people in the country also. Because of that also, this has led to the improvement in the life expectancy. People have experienced an increase in the per capita income which they have. And due to that, their standard of living have increased. They can access the better medical care 
um, and because of that, many reasons uh, um, this has led to all of that has led to the improvement in the life expectancy, right? So changes in. socio-economic conditions. Changes in socio-economic conditions. Uh, so this is about improvement in life expectancy. Now, India is also going through uh, the changing age structure. Now, India is also going through changing age structure. And the age structure is changing in such a way that the proportion of children in the economy is falling because of the fertility decline. And the proportion of adults is increasing because of increase in life expectancy and decrease in mortality rate. And at the same time, the working age population proportion is increasing, which is a good thing for us. So let me write a few points for you first. So changing age structure. Mm -hmm. So now the proportion of adults in the population is increasing and the proportion of children are falling because of fertility decline. So in India, now The proportion of adults is increasing and the proportion of children And the proportion of children is falling, right? Uh, right now, the percent in, in 2015, the percentage of people in the working age group, working age group is your 15 to 64. Right? So that age group, there are 65% of the, sorry, 60% of the people. Uh, this is expected to grow in the future also, which is a good thing. Because in case if you have more working age people in the economy, they'll be working the per capita incomes are going to increase, which is a good thing. Uh, so percentage. Of people. In the working age group. into 64 years is 60% in 2015. It is likely to increase in the future. It is likely to increase in the future also. But of course, I mean, somewhere around 2050, it will again fall. So it will increase till working working age population will increase till 2050. But then again, it will the, the percentage of working age population is going to fall. So because of the improvements in the life expectancy, the proportion of elderly in the population is going to increase. And that's what your, your next point is. The decline in fertility and the increase in life expectancy has led to the increase in the proportion of elderly in the population. Now, in case if the country has more elderly population, it means it is a, it has more dependent population. That population is not working. It cannot create anything for the economy, but it is dependent on the working age population. 
so it will the, the economy is going to have its own challenges because of that the decline in fertility an increase in life expectancy have resulted in an accelerated increase in the proportion of elderly population and when you have more elderly population so that elderly population will have health problems so it is going to be a huge health care cost for the economy and this will also have economic cost because these this proportion of the population is not working it is dependent on the working age population so this is going to create huge economic and healthcare challenges, right? So this is what I wanted to do in this class. And then we will talk about the preparedness of the demographic change in the next class, right? Thank you, Vita.